Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allah Ati Rasulu Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdikal ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalim, jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah Allah give us life in which to see the next few days and the opening of the last 10 days of Ramadan at Qawmin an nar Alhamdulillah that opening the rahmah and opening the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Dhul Fadl with every grace and emanation dressing upon the servant and the firewall of muntaqeem sort of dressing the servant to enter into this rahmah. For any other time Ramadan and any other type of fasting is so difficult upon the servant especially to reach these types of blessings. Shaitan blocks every type of blessing if not for the grace of Allah al muntaqeem like a firewall for the servant to enter in and to be protected. And then the grace of Sayyidina Muhammad of what Allah gave to partition to his nation and to all of creation then begin to dress that rahmah and by virtue of that rahmah they understood to ask for istighfar and forgiveness and then Allah opened the gate of maghfirah and repentance and forgiveness. And alhamdulillah the last 10 days of Ramadan is freedom from fire in which they have taught before that everyone has a, a seat reserved in Jahannam and a place in paradise and depending upon which direction they're going to be going in life and the actions and the deeds that they do then that reservation becomes more clear. And Ramadan is an immense reality to be a way of forgiveness and washing from that difficulty. Mm. The come in nar is that they're asking, Ya Rabbi that you granted us this rahmah, that you granted us this immense forgiveness. Now this place of, of difficulty, this abode of fire that is reserved for me that I want to bring within that abode this light and this mercy and this immense rahmah of the love of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad This training why itikaf is reserved for the 10 days, last 10 days of Ramadan is because the shaykhs and those whom follow the taruqs they did their seclusion and their seclusion, their first level of seclusion is all a training in their place of the grave. That as soon as they enter that seclusion by order of Sayyidina Muhammad not by order of ourselves wanting that, by order of Sayyidina Muhammad order from Allah then that order comes to presence of Prophet and then the order from Prophet to these awliyaullah that this one has to go into seclusion. That first level seclusion is their qabr in which the abode of immense difficulty. And they see the position and the reality of what they brought into this abode of the grave. We've described many times the analogy, our life is like a little child that goes out into the garden and thinks innocently it's picking up all the worms, the bugs and they put them in their pockets, oh I like to collect this some frogs and they pick up all these creatures out of the garden and they put it into their pockets and then they enter into the car when the play day is finished. And what happens in your car? All of a sudden all these things that the child brought is now coming out of its pockets. They're now crawling and, and crawling all over your car and this is for us an analogy to understand that we didn't reach maturehood. So in Allah's eyes we are a bit uh, uh, crazy children and we're out collecting a lot of evilness, not just little cockroaches but some scorpions are collected, rats and very, very dangerous energies and creatures. And we collect them throughout our day, throughout our nights, throughout our weeks, throughout our months and as a result these are just staying with us. 
and the qabr and the warning of the grave is that the, the game is over, your movement around is finished and now you enter into the abode. This is a bed that you made in life, now you have to live with it. Those who deny, it doesn't make any sense to deny it. It's not Allah punishing anyone, it's what we brought into the grave that has to be resolved. Allah said, I didn't bring those into there, I didn't make you to do these things, I didn't you know have these awful characteristics that you brought all of this difficulty into this grave and you know that uh, you don't have to even be religious to know that you're gonna die, everyone's gonna die. There has never been anyone who didn't die. So you don't have to be religious to understand you're going to die and you're going to take into that box and into that qab when they throw the dirt over your box, you're bringing yourself into that box and everything about yourself, your character, what you've done will all be in that box. It's the glad tidings for those who studied with the shaykh about energy because every action you do produces an energy. If it's good it's like a beatific energy, if it's bad it produces a very bad and negative energy. When they enter into that box that energy will begin to manifest. So the shaykhs in their seclusion with their whole lifelong of practices and whatever they did all their life, Allah made all their bad energies now begin to manifest. So all the cockroaches, all the rats, all everything, every energy will come out, Allah will give it its shape and every, every energy from the reality of what it is. If you're a person that is always uh, attacking with your mouth, you're like a, a snake or like a scorpion because everything you do is always harmful, you're like a wasp always attacking. So then imagine that energy will manifest as a creature that is attacking. But unfortunately it's not anymore attacking other people because it's in your box attacking you. If you continuously want to tell on people, give away people, do all these types of characteristics like a rat and then all these rats will begin to come out of you, Allah make them to manifest into what they really are of these creatures. And it's nothing to blame from the Divine, these are what we brought into this box. And those whom attack and were violent, imagine the horrific creatures that those are, that they actually not only were bad character people but they attacked, they harmed, they cheated, they stole, they did every type of abuse, every type of horrific thing, all those energies are going to be horrific creatures in which they come now and look at you in the box and begin to attack. So this is the reality of the qab, this is the reality of what's going to happen and the shaykhs witness that, they go through all of that difficulty. We said many times you can look on the videos on seclusion and then the shaykh describes the, the events of seclusion, one, two, three seclusions and each one at different states but the first Chen, the first 40 days of seclusion that has been ordered upon people is the seclusion of the grave and that everybody has to go through that grave. Allah's grace and ni'mat is that He put the shaykhs through that in their dunya because they reached towards mawt qabl al mawt. They died before they died and they actually witnessed their grave before they witnessed their grave. And the responsibility was then to fight those characteristics. One to witness so that when they teach, they teach like their hand. There's not a philosophy, they don't do any guessing, they don't do any lying and they don't read from somebody else's book about the grave, they saw their own grave. They cried and they screamed in their seclusion and they signed up for something maybe they didn't even know they signed up for. Especially if they don't have a family of shaykhs teaching them who and what's going to happen. We ordered to go in and we had no idea that it was going to be sort of beautific and, and amazing and it was horrific and you wanted to run. So it's something that you can't even imagine and if you didn't expect something like that 
then you understand immensely how important it is to teach other people, don't run from the grave you can't imagine what's waiting for you. That's why Allah says then the turuqs and awliya and the path of awliya is they've seen it and they're here to warn people because they really experienced to the degree Allah allowed them because the full experience nobody could survive. Allah gra granted the rahmah of experiencing it in a condition of a khalwa so that when it was intense they could stop, stop their meditation and tafakkur, go out, wash, shower, cool down, cry, they can't sleep because of the events they would see and the horrific nature of that immense difficulty and these creatures. But then all of that was a proof of we bring into the grave what we do, our character, every word we say is something manifesting. Many times the shaykhs can be around people and he actually witnesses the manifestation of character and creatures. You could be around somebody all of a sudden wasps keep appearing out of nowhere in the house because that's the energy of somebody around that is continuously attacking and Allah making that energy actually to begin to appear. So these, you know, this is a very deep reality that, that Allah created those creatures out of that energy. Once you take on that energy you're a manifestation of these creatures. So then look to the worst of characteristics in which Prophet described the scorpions, the snakes, the, 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 the creatures that attack and then now look at the people walking around with all these tattoos. That their tattoos actually have scorpions and snakes all around them. This was what Prophet described of the punishment of the grave. How close are we to the last days that everyone is walking around with the symbol of their grave on them? No? You understand? You're walking around because we're so close to the end of a symbol of your grave on you. That what, you're, what these people are marking themselves with is the reality of their grave and their grave is casting its condition upon the servant because those events are already happening to that person in the grave. They're surrounded by scorpions, surrounded by snakes, completely engulfed within it so bad that it cast its reality upon their insan and their physical movement on this earth and they're happy to have it then they keep doing it and keep marking it and keep getting angry, keep exhibiting and that's the reflection of the qabr upon that servant. And the people of light inshaAllah if their grave before is for light it's casting the reflection of the love of the light. The love of Allah, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And because that casting is so strong their calling is towards the love of Allah inshaAllah. And that that love is what's saving and calling them and their physicality back to the love of the heavens and love of Sayyidina Muhammad And by means of awliyaullah being dispatched upon the earth to teach people that Allah gives to us and everyone the ability to do our khalwa and that's our itikaf. That we enter into the itikaf and asking that, Ya Rabbi for the intention of itikaf that to give me an understanding. If people can't do the full itikaf and close themselves for 10 days then they make intention through the asr and maghrib from the time they work and come home that to do their practices, to do their zikr and most important is to make the rabita, make the connection and begin to see. Asking, Ya Rabbi I want to see my grave of difficulty, I want to visualize myself inside that grave for these 10 days and keep making my istighfar, keep making my salawats. And for those whom their heart inshaAllah open to see the condition of that grave, the difficulty of that grave that they begin to cry out their love for Sayyidina Muhammad And at that time they'll realize in life that these crazy madhab people who, who think they can call out to Allah 
you know we, we understood that if you want to understand the punishment of the grave, go to hospital. Go to the emergency room inside a hospital and look at the people in horrific conditions and everybody screaming out to something, to someone, to mommy, to daddy, somebody help me. And in those conditions and you see now with the COVID they show like India people not breathing, can't breathing, screaming, screaming, screaming. This is a sign of Jahannam coming. And who do you think you're going to scream to that is going to be answering your call? Are you screaming to your mom's gonna help you, your dad's gonna help you? You think anything going to help you? Then look in the emergency room, they're all calling out to their mom. You see old and elderly people asking for their mom, their mom because they're, they're, they're understanding maybe not of that level. And this is a, is a tremendous sign. That's why when you work with people, volunteer with people, see the condition of people, then we understand what condition we're going to fall in. So when these awliya went into seclusion, they tried everything in that grave. They didn't go with this highest level of knowledge. They went in to do their zikr, make their muraqabah, they're trained in tafakkur and anything they called didn't stop that punishment, didn't stop that difficulty. Because Allah has a key and He wants the key to be used. And you call out to whoever you want, call out to the seven heavens and the Lord Most High and there won't be an answer for you. Because there's a reason the punishment coming to you and it doesn't seem like you understood. And they go through their difficulty and they'll go through their difficulty until they realize within their heart that the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad must come to visit my grave. And that only Haris alaykum bin mu'mineen, the, only that light, only that love, only that bond immediately extinguishes all azab, all difficulty. So they don't have to go through the whole phase because when Allah describes in Qur'an everybody has a punishment and a term that is already been established. You do the crime in life and you're going to do the time. So anyone who starts to email us crazy things about, oh Allah will help. No, 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 Allah gave a very clear in the law, Islamic law that whatever you did wrong Allah has already determined a time for that punishment. Now you'll taste some of it in dunya by sicknesses and difficulties. But if that stealing and that person you hurt and this thing that you harmed for Allah for example was a 10 year term of punishment but you only saw some minor difficulties in life you're going to do the rest of that 8 years in, in the qabr. So this is Islamic understanding that Allah just says every sin has its time and there will be a time in which you'll be sick and you'll go through those difficulties and whatever punishment Allah has determined for that servant. So that's, the, that's in it, that's the law of it. So that's why in the grave when they're calling out Allah is saying, you have your time, this is what you brought, you were warned about these conditions, you've got to do the time. Then the awliyaullah who are guiding them in their teachings and in their heart and in their inspiration. So are you understanding now that all that you're calling out it won't stop Allah from the time that you have to do. So what was the secret to relief from the punishment? Is calling the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because you're somebody who's zalim and you're somebody who's going to get punished. And Allah not going to stop that punishment but there's a secret in the contract. When Allah says, I would not punish them while you are amongst them and while they're asking for forgiveness. Of course the one in the grave is screaming for forgiveness, the Arab, I don't know what I did, why these creatures are biting me, eating at me. So they're already asking for forgiveness, awliya inspire and push within their heart because Allah wants them to see it as a hundred percent truth for themselves. You saw the difficulty, you saw how it didn't stop, 
they fully believe and understood. That's why when they teach, they don't teach you philosophy. You think philosophy and come back, oh well, you know, I think, I think this ayah means this, I think the philosophy of that. Look at philosophy, get lost with the philosophy. This is real. They lived their life, they saw it, they witnessed it, they cried out and screamed during it. And then shaykhs pushed into their heart, only thing that will stop this is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And as soon as they begin to praising, begin to make their salawats, begin to ask, asking for Prophet please visit me in my condition, that only your life can stop all of this. The immensity of, of the immense blessings that as soon as the ruhaniyat of Prophet begins to appear at the Kaab and begin to smile upon the Kaab as if everything has stopped, every difficulty stops, every light and every blessing begins to dress upon the soul, so much so it's immense and can't be understood. We say Rasul Kareem you can't un understand the immensity of, of the Rahman and Najat. That only that loving light, only that loving presence by virtue of you having called upon that reality to be present with me in my difficulty, to be witnessing my difficulty, that have mercy upon me and ask Allah for forgiveness. Because Qur'an is not for dunya, Qur'an is for our akhirah. When they were oppressors to themselves they have to be in your presence to ask my forgiveness. And in the grave Allah make them to understand this beatific light of Prophet with all its majesty, imagine it appears and begin to make a du'a in which Allah stop every type of difficulty. There's no more difficulty coming upon this grave, this is now just the dress of immense rahmah in which Prophet begin to intercede for that grave, Ya Rabbi they ask for my presence. They're asking on, on, on their behalf, take away this difficulty, take away whatever hisab. Now you're talking to one whom has a, a check like trillions of dollars, this intercession was but 10 cents. The authority in which Allah has given to the reality and the soul of the Sultan of all heavens and earth, for him to make one du'a for this small little servant, it doesn't cost anything. Compared to what Allah has given to him, Sakha lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard wa bainahum. Have we not subjected all of the heavens and all of the earth to you and whatever's in between them? And for this dirty little servant, you're asking me, no problem, take whatever you want. That's the immensity of the reality of the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad that come to beautify the grave and beautify the soul and say, now all this difficulty is over and you begin to understand that you have to always keep that presence. You begin to understand how powerful the salawats are. Every time that you're making a salawat and nasheed as if Prophet's life is sitting there with you like a guardian and a protector, like a loving father who embraces his child so that the wolves and all badness doesn't come to them, doesn't eat them, doesn't devour them. Its immensity is, is unimaginable. We pray that Allah give us a life to see these last 10 days and to ask for the forgiveness that whatever condition that grave is, Ya Rabbi that let me to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad increase the amounts of salawat, the durood, increase the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't make your love just you say, oh I love, you love, I love. No, make your love to be real, give in the way of Prophet be of service in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad Do something in this living dunya to get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad Why if you're under the nazar of Prophet in dunya, that you used your dunya to achieve your akhirah reality, he's waiting for you on your departure from this world. You don't have to look and then find and hope that somebody will be greeting you. If you're a, a, a soul that understood and made your life to be under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and always saying, Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habibul Adi, always said, you gave from my dunya no problem. But when I take my last breath that your hand to be there, 
because I know I'm entering it now into the abode of difficulty. I saw it, I witnessed it, I pray that all my children don't face it, that my community and all my loved ones don't face it. When they see that difficulty then they eagerly want to go out and teach people, avoid this difficulty. They're not teaching a philosophy, they're teaching a reality that avoid this difficulty because you're going to scream out like the emergency room. You're going to enter the grave and you're going to cry and you're going to scream and all that you cry to nothing will happen. But if you cry and ask for awliyaullah, no doubt awliyaullah are there, they're, they're more there than on this earth. You need them more in the hereafter than you need them on this dunya, occasionally you come by, give something, say hello, watch a video. They're your wakil in the grave that the minute you die you say, I don't know what my amal is, looks like difficulty is coming that madad, ask for the madad, that I follow these Muhammadans, ask for your madad. And by means of their madad immediately they call the Supreme One. They call the Supreme One, they call the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It's a whole team of najat that begin to enter into the grave, begin to enter for the servant and asking Allah Ya Rabbi whatever you gave to us of goodness and blessings, this one tried, this one was following, this one was doing the mawlid, this one was trying to support, this one was this. And they present their case, they present their amal, they present all their actions. Ya Rabbi you see all of these things they did for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So it means these immensities of what shaykhs call people to, it's not understood by this filthy dunya and all the filthy comments that dunya make for everything. But when you'll understand who they are is when you took your last breath from this earth and you understand what their responsibility in the presence of Allah is and what a rahmah it is from Allah How everybody was destined for long periods of difficulty and for Allah but the, not even a day there's no time. It, the eternal punishment is, is something that can't be understood. And Allah granted an immense key just to show the greatness of that love. Teach them about this key in my love. For this love if it comes into the grave, of course Allah is not going to punish the, the reality of that love. He's going to bless it because it came, He's going to dress it, He's going to expand the grave and make the grave to be beyond the understanding of paradise inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. We put out the salah, I don't know how these, these, these crazy people who are so tough in their head. If what we're saying is true, if somebody has a doubt, it doesn't have a difficulty for you, increase your love. For if it's true, you save yourself from immense difficulty. And if it's not true, you are going to be punished anyways. So which one do you want? You want the hope that I'm going to have hope? So you take it and say, I'm a wise person, I think I, I should go with the way of hope than to be with the people who are hopeless. They lock that door and now they want to face their punishment thinking that their 2% saved them. Their Ramadan when they were yelling and screaming and looking at all sorts of inappropriate things saved them. They thought their actions saved them, their salah with every type of nifaq and hypocrisy in their hearts saved them. The teaching all of these ways of blessing, we sent out the Salat al Qafar Dunub from, from a big awliyaullah Mawlana Shaykh Adnan Kabani. Salat al Qafar Dunub, we have, uh, you want to read the English? You have the link? A Junaid, the one that we sent out from Shaykh Adnan's on my page. I can't read anything, can't even read English correctly. It should be under Shaykh Adnan's uh, under the 99, yeah right under the Mahdi, Imam Mahdi on the 15th, again he has an article there about the importance of Laylatul Mahdi. Underneath that is the Kafar Dunu. If 
You found it? Yeah. Yeah, Sayyidi. Okay, let's read. Hold on, let me get this on the speaker, hold on. Okay. Salatul Kafara as zunub is to be done on the night of the last Friday in Ramadan, either after the wither of Isha or during the night. It equals a thousand months of worship. It covers all the worship one has missed in one's lifetime and extends to cover your ancestors and all your family. Such power of this salah. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq anhu said that this was a sunnah prayer done to atone for all the past prayers that we missed since we were born. It was equivalent to 400 years of missed past prayers and Sayyidina Ali anhu said that it could be even rewarded as 1,000 years of missed prayers. When asked what the excess years are for, since we live for only 60 plus years, the Prophet said that it will be used to atone for the missed prayers of our parents and ancestors as well as for people in our town or village. It is a four rakah prayer prayed with one tashahud and one salam at the end. There is no tash- tashahud after two rakahs, just continue from the second to the third rakah without reading the at tahiyatul Start by reciting 100 astaghfirullah, then make your intention. It is prayed with the intention. I am praying this sunnah nafil prayer as atonement, all the prayers I have missed in my lifetime since the day I was born, till this moment and on behalf of all the ummah of Rasul sallallahu In the first rakat, recite Surah Fatiha once and Surah Al-Qadr, Surah 97, 15 times, then Surah Al-Kawthar, Surah 108, 15 times. In the second rakat, recite Surah Al-Fatiha once and Surah Al-Qadr, Surah 97, 15 times, then Surah Al-Kawthar. 15 times. In the third rakah, recite Surah Al-Fatiha once and Surah Al-Qadr 15 times and Surah Al-Qadr 15 times. In the fourth rakah, recite Surah Al-Fatiha once and Surah Al-Qadr 15 times then Surah Al-Qadr 15 times. Then read Sayyid salawat and the following Quranic verse. Inna Allah wa malaykatu salloon ala nabi ya ayyuhal lazina amnu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Then recite 100 salawat Duru Sharif upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Finally recite the following, do it three times. And then that dua over there. Should we recite the dua or no? Okay, that's it. Alhamdulillah, by the immensity of these awliyaullah, Shaykh Tahir, Shaykh Tahir Adnani, that immense reality that he, he gives to us these teachings and all the nashbandi awliyaullah that this is an immense blessing for those who missed uh, prayers, those who have prayers to be made up. All of these are a rahmah. If we are wrong because crazy people started coming, this fake, this fake, this fake, they're not getting it and they work for shaitan and they're ignorant. But if I'm right and this teaching is right, you're already going to be punished for everything you missed. So the likelihood of Allah saying, as a matter of fact I do accept this and this was taught by awliyaullah and this was given to the shaykhs and this was given by Prophet as in 99.9.999% of everything else that's been taught and the Wahhabis don't accept anything anyways. These were all the rahmah of Allah that Allah's mercy outdoes His punishment. But shaitan wants people to go to punishment. So when he sees these mercies he blocks them, says, don't, don't do it. But anyone with a mind, why wouldn't I do it? It doesn't cost me anything. I do it, if it works, alhamdulillah, I got all these bonuses, I go up in the heavens and Allah which I said, this one counted, this one counted, this one counted. He says, alhamdulillah take your seat right here, you have a nice front row seat. Yeah? Versus the one who says, he didn't accept anything, his faith was like a dark closet, he absolutely accepted nothing. What the heck are you planning to go to Allah's presence with? Nothing? 
you didn't accept anything, only your sins you accepted. And this is the this is the role of shaitan is to come and block and block and block. And that's why awliyaullah come and say, just do it. There is no there is no uh, bidah in ibadah. Any prayers you have to pray, pray. They say even pray hundred rakahs on Laylatul Qadr on the 26th night of Ramadan. Nobody can come and say, this is a bidah, there is no bidah. There are imams who would pray thousand rakah every night, they would fast every day. So in our worshipness our competition is to do the most that we can. If there are secrets out there we do them, if they worked alhamdulillah, if they didn't work alhamdulillah it didn't cost us anything but Allah for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad will never let him down. If Prophet said it, it's solid. If the companion said it, Allah won't let their speech to be put down, it's solid. And if awliyaullah taught it, Allah won't let them to be humiliated and will grant it. And this is the hikmah and the wisdom of following them. Is that Allah loved them, called them awliyaullah, called my friends, these are my friends, these are the ones whom I love and they love me. If they said something maybe it doesn't sound too correct, Allah said to hide them from shame and embarrassment, I'll grant it, no problem. So Allah's rahmah can't even be understood. Our job here is not to analyze but just to, we do it, we do it, alhamdulillah Ya Rabbi, give us every type of blessing and we'll do it. And Allah's rahman, immense mercy inshaAllah to dress us, bless us and grant all of them and all its barakah to be dressing upon us and all of it to be accepted inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.